What's up, family? This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. I want to share this video with you that sometimes I'm very hesitant in doing when showing Europeans are enlightening us as a people. When we got many of people who are sharing the truth, yet our own people don't believe it. So because of the hard headedness or the the disbelief or being indoctrinated and don't believe that our people know who we are, the truth of the matter. Sometimes we'll go resort to those on the outside of who we are or our race or our continent and let somebody else tell us. But listen to this guy right here and then I'll be that. And we uh, talk about Dahomey and, and Benin, West Africa, and the three things that uh, they attempted to do upon the black men and that is in the black women and that uh, is they walked around the tree how many remember the Detroit tribal revival and they put three potential they were never cursed people but potential curses on those people and that is of sexual immorality financial instability and utter poverty and that they would forget their roots and where they came from and that's what I'm going to be my whole teaching today is on the third uh, one there that I want to take a look at again they put they, they attempted to put a voodoo or obia curse on them of uh, sexual immorality, number two, financial instability and utter poverty, and number three, that they would forget their roots and where they came from. All right, let's go into culture. So how are we going to reach, how are we going to reach this specific culture? Watch what happens. Now, we're going to pull up and we're going to talk about history. And we have to go back into their history to explain where they came from. And number two, in America, because we live in a democracy slash republic, many of you start out in the very beginning like, I don't really care. But by the time it's done, trust me, their life has changed. Amen. Let's go in right now. Let's follow the narrator right now. This comes out of, part of it comes out of a narration in Torah 201. You saw some of this with the history of the African people in the Bible. And what are we doing now? What are we doing right now? We're going in to identify culture. Africa, then and now. In ancient biblical times, Africa was known by many names. Number one, Akibu Lan, mother of all mankind, Garden of Eden. Number two, Kemet. Three, Libya. Four, Artiga. Five, Corfi. Six, Egypt. Seven, Ethiopia. Eight, Sudan. Nine, Olympia. Ten, Hesperia. Eleven, Oceania. North Africa and Northeast Africa, now presently the Middle East, was linked by a strip of land called the Sinai Peninsula. The completion of the Suez Canal on November 17, 1869, severed the physical link that connected North Africa and Northeast Africa. The final separation came in World War II when the war correspondents coined the term Middle East to describe the area that now encompasses Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Yemen, Kuwait, Bahrain, Iraq, the United Arab Emirates, and Qatar. Now, so what happened was, is that now we're going to set the stage right now, okay? Now look at your notes again. So what, do we, what have we learned? That Africa not, did not have just the name Africa, isn't that right, right? It had several names. So that's really critical. We understand that. We become familiar with those terms. And I'll tell you, so that what? So that when you sit on a seat on an airplane, we begin to open up a discussion, and we begin to dialogue with them. Now, Rabbi, why, why would you even concern them? I mean, like, who really cares about this? Well, in the last days, there's a prophecy. And we're seeing the prophecy being fulfilled. In Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 through 6, God said he's going to regather and ingather those who he has scattered to the nations. The Bible says he's going to bring them back to the land, making, uh, making an aliyah to the land, and they're going to have a greater heritage in the land. Isn't that right? Amen? Okay, we're going to stop right now. Now we're going to begin to take a look at the history of this. This is some great stuff if you can hang in there. So what I'm going to do right now from the beginning of Genesis all the way through, I'm going to show you the line of that most people do not understand. And when people say that um, color doesn't ma ma matter to them, but it matters to someone who is an inner city, who has went through a struggle, who every time they walked into place, they were the isolated people, and etc. How many know that? Amen? 
And so you have to identify with the culture. You have to love the culture. You have to have a passion for the culture. You have to be, become uh, knowledgeable of what, what's going on. Because sometimes the worst fight I find within the black culture is the black culture. <laughs> they all fight amongst each other. Amen? So a lot of times we've just got to have them understand that God has a covenant promise for these people. Amen. And their covenant promise, even though part of that curse of the Obia curse, again, they were never cursed people, is that they would forget their roots and where they came from. So when we were in Barbados, I asked the whole crowd, a large crowd there, I asked them a question. I said, how many of you um, know Moses? And they all raised a hand. I said, so I'm going to ask you a question. If I asked you this, when you envision this, okay, tell me what color skin he has. Okay, you can see here the pin dropping the place in here. What do you think they said? What do you think they said? Final point. White. And I said, well, that's interesting. I said, if I ask you the name Joseph in the Bible, what color skin would you say? Now, this is an all-black culture. This is all-black community. Okay? What do you think they said? White. Okay? If I ask them, who enslaved you in Africa, who do you think they said? Wow. I told them, you flunked every exam. Yeah. Okay, now, so what, what's my agenda? How am I witnessing? How to witness our, the Torah? Say that with me. How to witness the Torah? How to witness okay, the Torah. Okay, so if the culture cannot see themselves in the Torah, you can't witness the Torah. That's right. You're done. You might, you're whistling Dixie. Because if you think you can come and teach them the principles of God, when they don't even believe that they're even in the Bible, and, and no one before them ever did them, and they're acting their mindset, well, then nobody else did them. Why should I do them? They have to see themselves in the culture, in the scriptures, in the text. And ladies and gentlemen, whether you think, and I know this is a highly, pray for me, will you please pray for me? How many feel, I can pin, feel a pin drop in the place, talk to me sisters, amen? And part of the reason why, no offense, part of the reason why black churches don't teach this is because they don't want to get in the struggle either. They don't want to make it, quote-unquote, racially motivated. People, this has nothing to do with racially oriented. I'm going to say that again. This has nothing to do with being racially oriented. This is biblical. Amen. I'm going to repeat that. This is biblical. Amen. These are biblical people. If they weren't, why are they in the Bible? If, if God didn't want you to see this, then why did he write it? He did it because it has to do with... His story, Yahweh's story. He has a plan. Come on, everybody, in the last days, his plan. All right? And this plan is to gather and regather the tribes. Right. So the priesthood, and then I turned to my black culture and I said, What? Your bloodline is priesthood? And, and no one told you that? I mean, like, not even one sermon with the Holy Ghost. Not one time. Everybody's up. I mean, like, it never even crossed their mind. Like, I should maybe just mention this. I'm going to ask you a question. Why, out of thousands and thousands of preachers, would not one in the Holy Ghost Amen. have the revelation could it be that the presence of this thing that happened in Africa maybe still has some influence that you forget your roots and not even be interested in it so you wonder why you're hated Because it's what's in your blood. See, you don't know who you are. And God wants to reveal it to you. But even as I'm telling you it, it, it no, no offense. Can I just be, can I just be friendly? Even, even as I tell the black culture this, it's like, you know, uh, just, you know, 
don't bring it up. And so what I do with my big mouth, I bring it up. Why? Why should you be ashamed of your culture? I, just, I don't understand it. It's not in my logic. Well, you've, that, you've not experienced the persecution. Maybe I have not. But maybe this will prevent much persecution. So now what do I do when I'm witnessing to the black culture? I'm saying, your forefathers, now walk with me, walk with me, don't miss this. Because 98% of everybody out there believes that their root starts in Africa. So they call themselves black African Americans. And really what they should be talking to themselves is they are what? The Hebrews and the Jews of the original temple of the city of David. So what do you think? I just want to say in, in short closing, there's a reason why we are a chosen people. There is a reason why we are treated the way we're treated. And in this whole scheme of things of me educating people, I have been revealing why. And I will continue to reveal why it is until we wake up and realize who we are, who we should be serving to be the example for the rest of the world. We will always be hated. We will always be suffering. Until now, many people are starting to wake up and realize the truth. This is your man, not your boy. Go black to Africa. Think about it. 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 Think about it.